Good morning. I am Ruth Darrell, or I am from the University of the Philippines, Manila. I am a medical student. And now I am here with my advisor, Dr. Nina G. Gloriani, and uh, with my other advisor, I'm here with us. So I'm going to present our study, the first record of pathogen plus virus species detected in bacteria and bacteria species using plant PCR. So this will be the direction of my talk for today. I'll start with the background and then the research question, objectives, methodology, cases, and their conclusion. And for the background, so we all know that lactospirosis is a re-emerging zoonotic disease uh, caused by the spirochete bacteria lactospirus species. Although lactospirosis can be seen worldwide, most of the cases were in tropical countries, such as the many countries in the Asia Pacific region, like Thailand and Philippines. The lactospire species are very successful microorganisms in terms of zoonosis. As you can see, um, these uh, lactospire species can um, infect a lot or can uh, get a lot of animal reservoirs. And uh, aside from its broad conducive climate, the Philippines is blessed to, have to be a mega diversity country. So if you are um, familiar with uh, ecology, with um, with wildlife, a mega diversity means that um, in such a small area we have different um, types. We have so many different types of species that can be found in such a small area, and like. Thailand, Thailand is also a mega diverse country, so that's, that becomes, uh, that causes the Philippines as an ideal area or place where leptospirosis can grow. So here is the um, interaction of um, the other the rodents, wild animals, domestic animals, and um, another thing is that in tropical countries we, we, we have a lot of rains, typhoons, so um, the flooding causes us to, to grow a lot of lepidopires also in the environment. So why did we choose to study bats? Well, first off, the bats are the second most um, diverse and abundant mammalian order in the world and the most diverse mammalian order in the Philippines. It's even uh, more diverse than the rodents, which we know are, which some of us know that are the only um, desert was for leptospires, but actually there are a lot of animals in carrying leptospires. And another one is that um, bats are the only mammals capable of true flight. So what does that mean? So uh, if we see other mammals like the flying sphere, they, they do not fly. They just jump and fly. But but um, bats, they really fly and they can go um, in such a far place and that uh, makes them, that uh, would give them an advantage for quickly spreading this infectious organism with, uh, whenever uh, this um, carrier status of the bats are confirmed. And other countries have already studied uh, the, the role of bats in leptospirus carriage, such as Brazil, Peru, Australia, and Madagascar. And, um, this is the first study to look at the terror status of bats in the Philippines. So we are proud to start um, this study in the Philippines. And hopefully others will be encouraged to study more about this. And um, the tool that we use is Flabby PCR. So Flabby PCR is a very good tool to detect pathogenic leptospirus species in urine and other um, animal samples because uh, they are uh, uh, Flabby gene amplification is very specific for pathogenic lactospire only. And so uh, right now we have already established the significance of this study. So we will try to answer this question. Using Flabby PCR and selective culture, are bats in the biologically diverse University of the Philippines Los Banos campus carriers of pathogenic lactospire species? So here are our objectives. But first, to detect the presence of pathogenic leptospirus species in bacterine samples from UPLB using flabby PCR. The second is to determine the existence of viable or living leptospirus species from the bacteria using selective culture. 
So here's, uh, here's our methodology first. We captured the bass using our standard methods, mist netting, and we temporarily caged them and fed them with um, glucose solution so that they're not starved. And we collect the urine using a clean tray and transfer the urine into 50 ml chemical tubes. And then we process the urine. Well, first we, we drop some urine to the culture media and uh, we extracted the DNA in the lab using um, kits, DNA extraction kits. And we detected the presence of pathogenic leptospire by uh, looking at the cultures, uh, these ones every week for only eight weeks. And we tried to look at the amplification of the flabby DNA region to see if uh, indeed there are pathogenic leptospires in the urine. And we confirmed, we tried to confirm if, if uh, whether uh, the urine is positive of for the flabby PCR. We tried to confirm the presence of the uh, pathogenic leptospire by sequencing the DNA region that was amplified. So here is our protocol for the culturing, uh, and um, you can just look at that very quickly. So um, for the flabby PCR, first we, we extracted the DNA using the reagent, we applied it, and then we we um, subjected it to flabby PCR using the flabby forward and reverse primers uh, designed by Kawabata et al. in 2001, and then we. We tried to look at the amplification using the ag using agarose gel and electrophoresis. So for the results, um, in in our culture, uh, no no urine was tested positive for for the pathogenic leptospires or the leptospires itself. But in flabby PCR, we are lucky enough to get one out of the 35 urine samples, and so we tried to sequence that. And good thing is that. Um, we found out that that, that positive um, flabby PCR is 94 to 95, 97% identical to the pathogenic leptospires that we already know. And uh, one good thing is that it's very interesting that the highest scores, the 97%, came from another bad study from um, Zambia, uh, done by um Agawa et al in twenty fifteen. So the the species that they found in this these bats from Zambia, which are um uh straw straw colored fruit bats, are the leptospiratory strain most B and um three two two C strains. So here is the Agarose gel which you see which you can see. Yeah, it's so faint, but you can see there that there are there is a band which is which closely um, has the same size as our positive control. So that means it's positive for the flabby PCR. And this is a band that has a positive. So uh, this bat has a very interesting story because this is a juvenile bat. This is a juvenile fruit bat or Cetus amplexical datus. And in another study in I think it's in the Union of Comoros. There is a relative bat, Rosetta also, who tested that tested positive for for lepto uh, for lepto, pathogenic leptospira. So we can we can take a lot of things uh, to study next. But of course, this is a preliminary preliminary study, but it has a lot of promise already. And for the conclusion, so ne the negative cultures from bacteria does not mean that Philippine bats cannot be carriers of like pathogenic leptospire species in their urine. <coughs> but because of, because of this study is, uh, has only such a small size, recommend that we increase the size into a statistically uh, significant or the recommended sample size. And we all we also need to optimize the culture techniques because the the bat urine are very something acidic. It has a different um, type of um, characteristics. And uh, although it is acidic, I don't. I, we cannot say that it cannot grow there because in the environment when you shed the, the urine, um, 
it is possible that they can dilute the urine there so it can grow in the environment and transfer to other animals. So another thing is that um, we conclude that it is possible to detect pathogenic leptospire species in the urine of Philippine bats. So again, we increase the sample size for the next studies and we increase the range of sampling size. So because in this study, we only um, tested the bats in the UPLB campus. Because it's, there have, um, the UP, UPLB campus have a lot of bat species. It's such a small campus, but um, if other people are interested in studying the bats in the Philippines, well, we have well, the, the entire Philippines is full of bats, so you can you can never um, lose any <laughs> anything to study there. So um, I would like to thank uh, my advisor, Dr. Gloriani, my uh, co-advisor, Dr. Phil Cordiola, yes. Professor Phil Cordiola, the lab and laboratory, the University of the Philippines, Manila. The Museum of Natural History, ECHRD, and the DOST in the Philippines, which funded my study. Thank you.